Who wants to meet the guy that's going to help you qualify for a Mercedes? Yeah! I'm excited for this. Uh, Michael Oliver is coming up, and him and I have had conversations in the back for an hour or two and didn't want to get away. So I'm excited to hear what he has to say. So Michael Oliver is the founder of Natural Selling, the only sales training program designed to eliminate the fear of selling so that people just like you can sell more in less time and grow their business faster. Over the last 15 years, Michael has helped tens of thousands of people worldwide in the direct sales and network marketing industry to take the tension and anxiety out of selling by understanding how to eliminate rejection. He uses a holistic, consultative, Socrative, Socratic selling approach. It's, there's underline, I can't read. With a unique twist that creates instantaneous attraction and trust with each other. Um, he's been instrumental in the success of many seven-figure earners in the network marketing and direct sales industry, some of who are ranked in the top 50. A certified Chopra Center trainer. That's awesome. Michael created and taught at the Chopra Center a course called Natural Selling and the Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, based on Deepak Chopra's best-selling book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. As an internationally recognized speaker, mentor, sales coach, he has been recognized as the best generic MLM trainer by an MLM insider poll. His best-selling book, How to Sell Network Marketing Without Fear, Anxiety, or Losing Your Friends, is used regularly by many in the industry as the standard and continues to help salespeople and business owners achieve outstanding results. Known as the why and how-to guy, Look forward to hearing why presenting your solution too soon and using conventional sales closing and objection handling techniques are the number one causes of resistance and how to reverse that. That's a mouthful. That's so without further ado, Michael Oliver. <laughs> Ow! I like the energy. Keep it up. That's, that sounded so boring, didn't it? Look at this. You can't even get good help around here. You have to carry your own stools. I don't know. So how are you doing? Okay, so would like, everyone would like to stand up for a moment? Okay. So uh, we're going to do a little exercise here. It's uh, got a Japanese name. It's called, <laughs> it's called Miro Sushu. Can you say that? Miro Sushu. No, no Miro Sushu. Very good. You've got to say it if you're going to do it properly, right? So just step back from your seats a little bit here. I want you to relax. Let your bodies just relax. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to bend over. Just go down low and just swing your arms. Just let them just flop around. Just let your body relax. Okay. And then as you come up, very, very slowly, I want you to clap your hands. So do it right now. Okay, clap them. Okay, clap them. Clap them. Just keep on coming up very, very, very slowly. Clap them faster. Come on, guys. Faster, faster. Faster, keep on clapping, raise them up right up in the air, quickly, okay, hold it, hold it, perfect, thank you, okay, okay, good, thanks. Okay, you can sit down now. That's how you get a standing ovation, right? So there you go. Well, I've got uh, <coughs> a really interesting subject to talk about, <laughs> which is basically the sales team, or, or as I like to put it, the sales partnership team. Uh, so Matt's asked me to give you an, a sort of a spin through of what we do, how we do it, why we do it, that kind of stuff. So would you like to hear that? Yeah. Okay, so who here then uh, would like to be able to make $8,000 without doing anything. Raise your hands. Yeah. Good. So would I. So tell me how I can do that. <laughs> so I think you've got an idea what I'm talking about there. They would. Um, so what I'd like to do is just spend a, a short while going through some stats, going through what we've been doing over the last three or four months since uh, Matt launched this, uh, my top tier business program. You know, I got a call about 2 o'clock in the morning saying, you know, start calling these leads. It's not true, but it was close. Um, so, uh, and, and just start from scratch. 
because we're still in the beta stage of this. I think most of you are aware of that. And so I see beta stage. We're still testing parts of it. And most of you have been part of that program. And I would say that probably right now in the sales uh, partnership program and the MTTB program, we're about, um, we're in the third stage, third beta stage. Now, these guys want me up on the stage, so I better go up here. Here we go. Um, and when I say third stage is that there was a few people who were asked if they would like to be involved in this program, which they, they did. And then there was a larger group that were selected. And the third stage is people who are coming through this program, the 21 steps and the 30-day uh, traffic training. And, and the third group are now beginning to produce, if you like, leads and, bringing them, and we're bringing them through the 21-step process. Is this making sense? So it hasn't fully opened yet. Still, we're still uh, in the beta stage and we're still ironing out a few things. Now, it's, it's really sort of come to my, uh, my notice that this is probably about the hottest ticket item out there in the marketplace. I mean, who else is offering a $500 back guarantee for 49 bucks? I mean, it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. That's a very hot uh, sales copy. And what we're finding uh, statistically is that we're getting some really good results. Who's, who's um, spoken with me at step 15? Raise your hands right up high. OK, some of you have done that. And some of you, I sort of fast-tracked you through. Who have you gone, how many of you have gone through the 21 steps without talking with me at step 15? OK, uh, TG, you probably spoke with TG or Marlon, and they would, they would just give them the instructions just to go through with you. Uh, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, explaining what I do at uh, stage 15 and also the other stages. Is that OK? Would that be useful for you? Because yeah. if you know the product that you're selling, it's going to be easier for you to understand it when you're talking with people. Not that you, you have to do this, because we're going to do that for you. I mean, this is how you make $8,000 without doing anything, right? You, you get that point. All, all you have to do is the marketing. Um, and really, to be successful in this business, you know, Justin was talking about marketing. The reality is, is you've got to have marketing and sales. Because you can have marketing, but unless you've got a way of communicating with people, preferably verbally, and that's where most people fall down in this industry, in the online marketing industry, is that they don't know how to communicate with people, or they're afraid of communicating with people and don't know how to communicate, or they communicate badly. They can't make the sales as well as they could. You know, and, and selling is, uh, is an art and a science, and there's different ways of doing it. Um, and some of you who are in Fiji uh, got to learn how, uh, how I've been doing it very successfully over the last 15 years and training people to do it as well. Um, and uh, some of the people I've trained who in the direct, direct sales industry are making phenomenal sums of money. Um, as a result of doing that, you know, something going back six or seven years when I personally coached them. So there's a way of doing that. But the sales, but the marketing of sales is really important. And in fact, I went back to about a year ago and spoke with one of the most successful. His name is Jeremy. And I said, so, so what do you attribute your success? Because he actually put it on Facebook once that he became 47th largest um, income earning in the direct sales industry. And, and he attributed that success to me. He said a thank you to, to me and put my name there. So I said, you know, thanks for doing that. But what do you actually contribute, attribute your success? And he said a, a balance of marketing and, and sales. He said the reality is good sales comes from good qualified leads. Does that make sense? Really good qualified leads. So the better the qualified leads that we can get, the better you get at marketing, the more focused you are on marketing, the more sales that we can uh, make for you. Because we don't do arm twisting. No, we don't do the manipulative thing because that's basically a road to nowhere. Because what happen, will happen is that people will dive out. Why is that? Because if we arm twist people to, and use the traditional or conventional way of selling, then if they buy, whose reasons are they buying for? Are they buying for their reasons or for our reasons, do you think? Our reasons. You know? I mean, if you're good at it, you can really manipulate people to buy stuff. But then they, they get buyer's remorse. They shrug it off because it wasn't really a deep in, uh, deep enough reason for them to want to make a change. So our sales process is to help them uh, to go deeper, you know, to help them do that. And I'll explain that in a moment. So statistically, uh, with, with this program, we've only been operating it now for about three or four weeks. And it's been gathering momentum very, very rapidly. Um, and I think that the, the reason is that we're getting very good conversion rates, which I'll share with you in a moment. Uh, I've already done that with some of you is that, <coughs> excuse me, 
um, is that it, it is a dynamite program. There, there's nothing really out there in, in the marketplace. I mean, how many, how many programs like this that you actually do physically get uh, in contact with someone? I mean, you, you're in contact with at least three people several times throughout the whole program, taking the 21 steps and the 30-day traffic uh, training program. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite intensive as far as someone being around as someone you can talk with. And, and we respond. I mean, at least I do. Those of you who, who uh, I've spoken with and helped get titanium and platinum, you know that I'm there and I'm responding to you all the time. So there's that very high touch element on it. Because after all, we are in a high tech industry, but it also requires a very high touch to be successful. So there's, there's that, the program itself. It's a great sales letter, which is, which is good. Um, we've got uh, great people on the front door after the purchase of $49. You know, we have great people who, who welcome them and help them qualify themselves as well as qualify them during, during the process. And so there's a number of factors that are really working for us. And, you know, and plus the fact it's brand new. So you've got a lot of things going for you um, if you concentrate on it. But, but as Justin was saying, you know, you've got to take action on it. And for some people that I've spoken with, you know, they're doing a variety of things. And some have openly admitted that, you know, they get distracted by the shiny objects. They get distracted by all the other emails that come in. But really and truly, you know, I think it's good to take one thing, get really good at it, and then start being a, having a greater diversification. You know, John Chow, for example, he didn't just do it in two or three months. You know, it took a while, perseverance and so on, until he got the balances right. And, and now he's able to use a number of different applications, even though his primary one is blogging. So it, it really takes that dedication to make it work. Um, and the conversion rates are really good. I was talking with Brian about it about a week ago, and he said it's about 2%. 2%. If someone clicks on that sales letter, we're getting about a 2% conversion. Between 40 to 60 people who read the sales letter will will come through, buy the $49 product, and we'll pick them up on the front door. We give them a call. You think that's good? Is that all right? Pretty good rates, yeah? Yes or no? Yes. OK. Anyone says no? OK, cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, we, so those are pretty good, good rates. Um, now, I'm not a, a, a technical marketing person in that respect, so I have to take it from other people that I've uh, got that feedback from that you know we are getting good conversion rates and perhaps they'll go higher once we open this up and and it starts perhaps going viral and it could well do because it is a dynamite program and it's fresh it's new so what happens then so they they buy their forty nine dollar product thank you and um, <laughs> then then uh, they're met at the front door uh, by uh, two or three people, uh, Marlon, TG, and, uh, and Max as well. Max has, has joined the team. Um, and they're put through an interview process. And it is actually the natural selling process. That's what, what they're done. And, and that's what's done. That's, they've taken that training. And they're very good at it. They're excellent. If any of you, any of you actually uh, gone through that process with Marlon or TG, raise your hands. Yeah? Would you attest that they're very good at the way they communicate? They're, they are excellent. No pressure, but there is an internal pressure that they, that, that, uh, that they can help create. And it's based on asking questions. It's based on responding to what they hear. And it's based on allowing the person they're talking with to create their own momentum, their own desire, and lift that up and, and to really find out as to their, their reality as to whether this is what they want to do. The qualifying process, see, as far as I'm concerned, is not about us qualifying somebody. It's helping them qualify us, and just as importantly, helping them qualify themselves. You see how that works? You know, there's a lot of, lot of qualifying that goes into it, and that's what gives it so much strength and so much in depth. So having got to that point, um, you know, they'll, uh, give <laughs> they'll give access to, um, uh, to the, people, the new members, the, the, the people who have just bought the My Top Tier Business uh, Income. Uh, program, and they'll give them uh, the first three and then the next three steps. And it's usually at the sixth step uh, that the license rights uh, are being presented and are being sold. And it actually comes earlier than that, but it's around about that time that those license rights are sold because they're an integral part of being able to create top tier income. 
Now, for some people, they might respond and say, well, you know, this is rather expensive. But that's the point. You know, we don't shy away from that. The point is, it, it, it's expensive from the point of view of if you're coming from normal thinking, but it's cheap if you're looking at wanting to start a process of creating a top tier income for yourself. Because you have a choice. You can either sell 100 widgets at a dollar, or you can sell one widget at $100, right? And it, the reality is, it's probably just as easy to sell you know, one widget at $100 if you know how to do it. And that's what Matt has set up here. And so we don't shy away from that. So, uh, so it's an important part of it, and it's an important part of the thinking, part of the thinking to be able to create the high level of income. And that's what the whole 21 steps is really all about, is helping people elevate their minds to start thinking in a larger way so that they can make the money that they would like to make. And for some of them, it's a dream. You know, I've spoken with some people who put down $50,000 a month, and they've admitted that you know, that's something that they had never thought about before. You know, they hadn't even made more than $5,000 a month, and here they put this in. And, it, and it's great to see that. You know, it's great to see that, um, that target even though at this time it might be out of reach for them mentally, but they are reaching them, reaching that thinking through these 21 steps. So part of that process is for us to help them, to help them do that. How are we doing, okay? Yes. Any questions that you might have so far? You want anything burning coming? All right. Always suspicious when there's no questions. All right, so, no, not really. Um, okay, so that, that's that sort of first part, little introduction, first part of the process. At that point, they don't have to buy the license right, uh, but here's the stats. Marlon, for example, is converting 50%, 50, that's 50% of people who buy the $49 um, product, he's converting to the license rights. He's helping them buy that. And that's pretty phenomenal. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a great exchange rate. Remember, we're doing all this for you, so part of this is that, you know, how would you like to make eight grand without doing anything, is the fact that who's doing all the selling? Who, who's, we're doing all the selling for you. We're taking, part of, taking that care of that for you, that part of the equation. So that's a good conversion rate. So after that, they go through to step 15, and the video's momentum builds up, and, and there's a lot of emphasis on the titanium and platinum products, as those of you who have really gone through it, have seen. Most of you had seen them before, but now it's, it's being packaged. And so again, it's helping to increase the, the, the mindset of uh, the person who's going through this, a new member. And at step 15, that's where I take over. When I, I get the goals, uh, the new member, new license rights holder makes this appointment with me, and I'll spend anywhere between half an hour and three quarters of an hour with somebody, longer if necessary. Um, and it goes through a process. Would you like to hear about the process? So if you haven't, yeah, that would be okay? All right. Uh, before I do that, though, I'll just share with you that Matt is going to talk about something uh, a little bit later, okay, which is going to, is go you'll listen for the word strategy session, which is going to be a longer version of that to help you really get your goals sorted and so on. Um, and what I do I don't normally do as long a version as that because it can take quite some time. But it's a very thorough version that I do, and I find it works very well. So what I do is I, I make sure that uh, that that person I'm talking with understands the uh, the whole process, the last 15 steps. That's <laughs> 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 so cool. So they understand the last 15 steps, and they also understand right from the beginning that they're locked in at whatever license rights that they have. And for some of them, they don't realize that. So it's, it's, so it's, a, it's a real clear, if you like, um, uh, foundation to help, help them understand that in order for them to achieve those higher incomes, they're going to need those different levels. Now, when I talk with them, I then go on and make sure and clarify that they know what the uh, fees are what, uh, for those. And uh, I turn it into a test. Now, if any of you have, uh, were at Fiji and know anything about me, you know that asking questions is the most powerful way for a person to learn. And it's the very most, most powerful way for a person to learn about themselves. And, and that is sort of part of the Socratic dialogue. And unfortunately, it's something that's lost nowadays. You know, the good schools uh, use it, but they, 
they don't, most schools don't know. It's, it's, it's straightforward information, just like I'm giving you. But it's OK in certain circumstances. And so by putting them through this test, it's a very gentle test. Sometimes I'll ask the question, and so I say, so, so you know the, uh, uh, the fee for titanium and platinum, right? And they'll go, yes. So there's about four or five seconds silence. And I'll go, and, they, and it is, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, then, and then they'll give me the numbers. And then I'll jokingly say, you know, this is a test. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you can't fail this test, but this is a test. And now we're into, into the group. So they give me the numbers, and if they get them wrong, then I can help them get them right. If they get them right, great. And then we move on. So what are those commissions? I ask, ask them for the commissions. Then we look at the stats. And we look at the, the st across the board statistics of conversions in this industry and in the past. And the numbers are, anyone know what those numbers are from the, the point of view of number of license right sales to titanium to platinum? Basically 621, yeah. So every six license rights sales, two will go on to buy platinum, and one will go on to buy, uh, sorry, titanium, excuse me. Two will go on to buy titanium. One will go on to buy platinum. Now, this is across the board statistics, so it doesn't mean to say it's going to happen to every single person. And what we're beginning to find is that those statistics in this program look as though they're going to be, uh, look as though they're going to far exceed that. So I'll share with you that since uh, beginning of July, um, I've helped 19 people buy platinums, and excuse me, I've got platinum on the mind. 19 people uh, buy titaniums and two platinums, and there's plenty more in the wings, you know, that will start popping up over the next two or three months as people put funding together and other, other things that they need to do. Okay, so this, the stats are, are coming in really strongly. So it's 621 that comes up, so we go over that. We look at the um, what that means in dollar figures. In other words, for every six license rights sales that we make for you, you make how much in commission? 6,000. Six, 6, and if you own the titanium, based on those stats, you make how much? Another 6,000, which is what? 12,000. And if the stats stay true and we sell a platinum for you, make how much? 5,000, which is a total of 17,000. So in effect, you've tripled, what, your income for doing any extra work, yes or no? No, you just own the license rights to these products. And so if your marketing is really keen and you're focused and you, you can create uh, good leads and uh, we know we can convert them, I mean, that's not a problem. We can help them uh, through the whole process, through the, through the thinking and through the practical application. Uh, we know we can do that then you know, it's, it's a very successful partnership that we can uh, have together. And that's really the critical part. Another part of this, too, is that we, we, we help people as much as possible to steer clear of any technical things. Now, because we're in the early stages, there are a lot of things that flooded in from MOBE. You know, systematically, that's being shut down. Because we don't want anyone to start getting into the how-tos you know, into the technical side, because all of a sudden, it starts creating problems for us. It's all about mindset. It's all about thinking. The how-tos come later with the 30-day traffic training program. You know, that's where the how-tos come in. And that's where th the secondary magic happens as well as they start realizing that, you know, this can really work for them, for those who initially might be a little unsure. So, it's sick, so at this stage, this business plan stage, this strategic stage, if you like, um, just continuing the process. We look at their, uh, turn that into, those into dollars. We look at the, or I do anyway, I look at uh, their goals. And their goals can vary. You know, some of you in your room might recognize this. You know, the goals can vary between anywhere between $5,000 a month and six, $60,000 a month. You know, some have never made $60,000 a month, as I said. Um, but that's okay. I don't, I don't disrupt those goals. But what I do, though, is use them to create clarity in how they're going to reach them. And I convert the 60,000 a month into a yearly thing, which is 600,000. And then, then I say, you know, obviously it's being, it's obviously must be clear to you that you are going to need titanium and platinum to do this if this is going to be your primary function of making um, you know, uh, top tier income for yourself. And they'll say yes or no. You know, but now if they haven't, 
and, and some haven't quite got it yet, but at that, that point, they really get it. And so, so when are you going to do that? Is that something you like to do right now? And at that point, we get yes, no's, uh, maybes, depends, you know, money, all the, uh, the time, commitments. There's all sorts of things that come up. So it's that point that I address that as to however, whatever it is. And then at that stage, um, after we've addressed it, we've either helped them buy a titanium and a platinum, um, or we've made other arrangements. Um, there's a variety of different things that come up, different conditions that come up. And then I'll open up the 16 to 21 steps for them. Sometimes I open up the traffic training, and the uh, traffic coach is allocated to them automatically now at step 21. Okay, so it's a very simple process. But usually at step 21, I reach out and uh, talk with them one more time uh, just to make sure they're on track. And uh, for those who uh, needed to get some funding together and so on at 21, I'll talk with them again about getting titanium and or, and or platinum. That makes sense so far? Okay. I also explained to them at that time that they're going to have two coaches. They're going to have me in the background, and then they're going to have a marketing traffic coach, and that all the marketing traffic coach um, questions that they have, all the technical questions, back office questions, all go to the traffic marketing coach, not to me. And if I get any, then I gently steer them back again to the traffic marketing coach. And that enables us to cr create a clear delineation. It doesn't uh, create a, a problem where we might overlap with each other, okay, so that we can concentrate on what we do best. And I'm not offering ideas that I'm not qualified to talk about. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. How are we doing? Yeah. All right. Do you like this process? Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So it works out well. So at that stage, then, uh, the new member is in the traffic program, uh, can go at their own, sp own speed. I've opened up the 30-day traffic training program to them. Uh, used to be the traffic coach used to have to open up the remainder, but they can then go at their own, own speed. And at uh, the license rights level, they get uh, three uh, half-hour sessions. And the titanium, they get eight. And of course, at the platinum, they get how many total? How many? 18. Is that right, Brian? Thank you. I, I thought it was 10 at one time, but uh, 18, even better. That's great. So they get 18 tra uh, sessions there. So we're just in the process of going through all of those um, at the moment. So uh, I, don't, I don't have any feedback on that. But that basically is the rundown through the, uh, through the 21 step and entering into the 30-day traffic training program. So that's pretty much it. I can give you some more stuff in a minute, but let's just open up and see if you guys have any other questions, or any questions, I should say. Yeah, sure. Actually, what, let, let's, have you got the microphone going? Good, let, let's use that. Thank you. As a licensee, um, the, lower le the lowest level, MLR, if I, one of my leads um, is converted either through your phone room or through myself. Yeah. And they upgrade to titanium or platinum, since I researched before and I know that there's been a change of the compensation plan, do I still earn the three and $5,000 commission or do I have to be a titanium and or platinum to earn those commissions, the three or the $5,000? You, you and that's to, going over my head. You have to own the titanium and the platinum license rights in order to make the three and the five. Okay. Now, just to clarify, um, let's say you had the license rights, the $2,000 license rights. Which I do. Yeah. And one of your leads enters the program. They buy the license rights. You get the, two, you get the 1000 Of course. And then you see three or four license rights, and you go, well, I better get titanium and platinum and you decide to do that, even if they buy titanium platinum, the commissions still go to your sponsor. I understand. Okay, just, just so it, it's clear. So the highest level I can earn as a $2,000 licensee is indeed the $1,000. That's it if you only own that. At this point in time, I mean. Point of time, yeah. yes. Only momentarily, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, 
Let's see, who is your sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? Jenny Jordan. Perfect. Well, I'm sure she'll be very happy. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. All right, that clears it. Yes. You mentioned that one of the coaches had a 2% conversion rate. Yes. What's the overall conversion rate for all of the three coaches? I don't have that just yet because it's early. But my, I suspect that it's, this, it's the same. Um, with TG, for example, um, he's getting uh, very high conversion rates, but I haven't had a chance to go over them with him. But seeing the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The license rights that are coming through and knowing the number of, um, and comparing it against Marlins, it's about the same. But I'll see if I can get that some out to all of you sometime. It could even be higher, I don't know. Is that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. There's another question at the back there. How you doing, Michael? Eric Scott. Um, what's the maybe one or two most common um, challenges, I guess, you're experiencing when people come into the program in upgrading? Uh, the first two that come to mind, uh, the first one is pretty obvious, is money. And then the other is uh, commitment. You know, I'm, uh, it's amazing to me how many people, let's take the second one first. Um, it's amazing to me how many people have been on the online marketing business for quite a period of time, anywhere between six months and three years, and have been struggling. And it's very easy, after a few questions, I, I do it for their benefit, not for mine. It's very easy to see they've been struggling because they've never focused on anything. They just keep on being distracted by things or life gets in the way. And therefore, making money online, or earning an income online, has not really been a primary focus. And it's the same with a lot of people. You know, we kind of pretend. <laughs> we, we pretend about things, but our actions uh, cause, you know, creates a discontinuity here because, in fact, what, what we say we are doing and what we actually do, uh, you know, is, is a contradiction. Matt was talking about it earlier, saying, you know, you can sit in front of the computer and four hours go by and you go, did I earn anything? And the answer is no, because you did a lot of administration stuff and so on. And it's that focus, you know, of, uh, of doing what your in real intention is, is that is, is difficult for a lot of people. In fact, there was one guy who, ca who came on and um, he had a goal of, I think it was forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. And I said, so, asked him about achieving it. And he said, no, he said, I've been doing this for three years. I'm all over the place. Uh, you know, I know that. I'm, I'm dodging from here. I'm dodging from there. And he spoke for five minutes about all the stuff that he was doing or doing that wasn't getting him to where he wanted to go. So I listened. And I said, so, what are you going to do about it then? And he said, I don't know, because I've been, and then he starts all over again, right? <laughs> I mean, literally. And so what's he doing? He's answering his own question. So I'm not going to answer it for him. So I said, okay, so how are you going to get out of this circle, and what are you going to do about it? And then over about 15, that's all we did for 15 minutes. So I was just coaching him. I must have asked him only about four or five questions. And basically, they were the same questions. And then he said, well, I guess I've got to stop and concentrate on one thing. I said, well, what are you going to concentrate on? And he had another program that he had. And he said, well, I'm going to concentrate, as she said, the other program. And I said, why are you going to concentrate on that program? And he had a valid reason for doing that. OK, uh, there was a, a practical reason. I said, OK, then concentrate on it. And when you're ready, come back, and then you can concentrate on this program. Or if you find that program isn't going to work out the way you think it is, come back and concentrate on this program. And he'll sit there, and he'll come back. Because no one's ever really spoken with him that way. Because I didn't tell him what to do. What I did was help him reveal to himself what the problem. He already knew what the problem was. He just needed someone to listen to him and not tell him what the problem was so he could discover it for himself. So he could hone it. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's really what coaching is all about. I mean, it's not you telling, us telling people things. It's just allowing them to grasp it, take it in, and hold it there for as long as they can. And he'll come back. He'll come back very soon because he's going to discover a couple of things about this other program that isn't going to work for him. And then we'll, we'll bring him up at that stage. And then when he comes back, he's going to be dedicated, which is really critical. The other thing, money. 
Money is sort of comes in a lot of different forms because there are some people who generally do not have any money. There's a guy I'm talking with who lives out of a car and has to communicate with me via um, a library, you know, in a library computer, uh, computer. And so, you know, there are certain people who just can't do it. But, I use the word but carefully, at least he's trying. You know, a lot of us have been there. I've never lived out of a car, but a lot of us have been there. And so I don't care where a person is from, you know, as long as they've got the commitment to want to move forward, I'll help them. You know, I mean, someone who's got passion, someone who's ready to, to get out, someone who's ready to make a move forward and do anything what it takes, that's far more important than someone who says, yeah, I'll give it a go, or yeah, it looks pretty good, or yeah, I can make a few hundred thousand dollars. You know, it takes a rather lackadaisical attitude about it. It really requires someone to want to, want to do it, you know. Um, and, and I think that kind of person is really valuable. Uh, some people do have the money. Some people are a little bit concerned about the program, any program, not just our program. Um, and so it's a matter of talking with them, finding out where their concerns are, um, attempting to um, address those concerns, and sometimes letting them move for, through the system some more, because the next five stages after stage 15 are very powerful to demonstrate, again, you know, the titanium, from owning the titanium and platinum uh, licenses, uh, ways of financing them, and so on and so forth. And people will come up at uh, 21 or just afterwards and say, okay, I'm ready. It's just a matter of just being gentle and just observing the whole process and uh, helping them to go through their thinking go through the funding, finding the money, and so on and so forth. For example, I'll give you an example here. If someone says to you they don't have enough money, what do you think is one of the best responses you could ever give? Anyone got any idea? I don't, I, I don't have the money. Say again? Yeah, you could say, what are you going to do to get the money, yeah? You could, now, you, that's kind of where you're going to get to. Excuse me? Well, you could do. How would you feel if I said that to you? <laughs> you be very careful kind of how you, you know, it's the kind of thing we'd like to say, right? <laughs> if you say, how can we solve that? You're getting there, if you say, how can we solve that? What you're doing, in effect, is, is what? Taking on some of the responsibility yourself, yeah. right? Why don't you have the money? Why, uh, yeah. why don't you have the money? You could say, why don't you have the money? That, that could be introduced there. It depends on how you introduce that. That could actually seem confrontational. So you could be fairly careful, especially with that why question. I use the why question quite often, but it's just the way I say it, OK? You, you could do. Let me just. just Approach a couple more people first. Yeah, you could do that. One second. Uh, Carol? Okay. You could, you could use the feel felt found thing, but the point is for the feel felt found, I'll tell you right now, I hate it. Because do people care how you feel? Do they care what you found? No, they don't. I, yeah, but it's, but, but it's you talking about, I understand what you're saying, but what I found was, or what they found was, or what someone else found was, and how they felt. It's like they don't care. It's, a, it's an objection handling technique, which is, um, at the back? Is it possible to get the money? Yeah, some good questions here. You could talk about the, well, the return on investment by getting the money. OK, but well, they don't have the money. OK, that, that's the thing. They don't have the money. I'll put you out your agony in a moment. But these are good questions. If you don't think you have the money, then you probably don't. You could do. But I think that would be a little bit hard. Justin, What is keeping you from having the money? That's a good question, secondary question you can bring up sometime, yeah? I, I would do a kind of a sharp angle if I could show you how to get the money or help you get the money, would you do it? 
Okay, two things about that. If you use the words, if I could show you, based on the Socratic approach where you're trying to keep the uh, emphasis on them, where does, the, where does the focus go? It goes on us. Now, there's actually a, it's a very good phrase. There's a way of changing that, saying if there was a way you could get the money. So if you want to keep the whole thing neutral and keep it in their court, I, I suggest you just change that. If I could show you, which is a standard conventional sales technology, into if there was a way you could. Good question to have. I wouldn't exactly use it in this context, except a little bit later maybe, okay? But there is a way of using it. Okay, one more. What about what options do you feel are available to help you create the money? What options do you think available? Okay, this is, where I, this is what I found very effective, okay? And you, you can use a lot of those things you're talking about. What I found effective is this, is ask a question and just say, okay, I can understand that. You can, I mean, you can understand a person doesn't have the money. And whatever the money means, I don't know. When they say I don't have the money, do you ever know what that actually means, yes or no? No, no we have no idea what that means. They, they might, you do? <laughs> yeah, right. See, I, the opportunity of value isn't worth more than the money. You see, that personally, I don't agree with that because if I don't have the money, I can, rec I can recognize the, the opportunity, but if I don't have the money, it's still not going to make any difference, right? So, so you've got to accept what they're saying as not understanding where they're coming from, but the fact they've made a statement, which is I don't have the money. Now, this is where you, re where you can respond. You say, if you did have the money, would you do this? It's really simple. If you did have the money, would you do this? Would you buy this license? Would you buy these licenses? Can you see the value of the program? Now, they can only give you one of three answers, which is what? Yes, no, or what? Or maybe. And the yeses and the maybes, you take the same, and the no, you take it face, face value, all right? So if they say no, you can always follow up and say, can I ask you why you wouldn't do that? No, they might give you a valid reason, and it could be a valid reason. There's nothing you could do about it. But if they give you a yes and a maybe, then you can also strengthen that question by saying, so give me an idea, one out of 10, 10 being that you would, act, would buy it if you have the money, what would that be? And they'll give you anywhere between eight, nine, and a 10. And if it's eight and a nine, then I follow up with a question and say, well, what would make it a 10? Because you need to find out what would make it a 10. It might not make it a 10, but, it, but it's important to find that out. If they say it's a 10 and they get to that 10, here's the question, the real question you want to ask is, so how are you going to find the money? This is part of the psychology. So how are you going to find the money? Okay, it's going to be helpful for you in the future when you're talking with people that you know and so on. Because when you do that, where's the responsibility? Where does it go? On them. On them. It's up to them. And it's something magical happens. Because it's amazing how many people have the money. It's, there is money somewhere. Either something's coming up, they have it tucked away somewhere, and the realization as you go through that process of this perhaps being more important in their lives right now to do something about their lives so they can make, move forward is more important than having the money tucked away somewhere. And they'll release the money, or, the, or they'll get the money somehow. Only if, only if, though, in this present moment, doing this is more important than anything else. Does that make sense? Are you okay with that? Give it a go sometime, because it really works. OK, one question. Oh. Is asking a question, if you did, would you buy this, try creating a pre-commitment so that when, you find it, when they find a solution, that they won't reject it because they've already committed that if they had the money, they would buy it? Is that Perfect. basically what's being done? No, not, not necessarily buy it. If you, if it. So if you did have the money, is this something that you would do? Would you get this license? So you leave the word buy out as such. But you, you've actually nailed, the, nailed it on the head, yeah. Because what they've done is they have, what, created, who's, who's come up with a solution? Who's come up with a, with a commitment? Maybe. It's all about them. You help them to take personal responsibility for their lives. You, you help them to make that commitment. They'll stick with it. But the moment that there's even a slightest hint that it's about you helping them get that money, even going to the extent, now there is a way of doing this because there are some people who I know have some of the money because they'll tell me they don't have all of it. So that's where I'll introduce the question and say, well, let me ask you a question. 
if there was a way that you could do that, if there's a way that you could get titanium right now, if there's a way you could take advantage of all that, that titanium has to offer, the license has to offer, all right, is, um, it, would, you, would, would you do that? If there was a way that wouldn't cost you the full amount right now? And usually their response is yes. And then I'll introduce the payment plan. But I don't like introducing a payment plan. I steer clear from that as much as possible. Most times they'll bring it up because they've heard about it. You know, but I don't bring it up because anyone know why I don't bring up the payment plan? If I unless I have to. Yeah, because they'll take that first. What else? There's a potential that if they're not fully committed, they'll drop out. All right. Once you, once you put a, a large sum of money in, you're committed, okay? You know that. You're in it. And so it helps them in the mindset to be able to grasp that and move it forward, okay? They're going to get involved in it, so, so they're, they're going to be committed, and commitment is really a key thing here. Commitment to who? To themselves. It's all about them. Everything is about them. And, and, and I certainly don't offer anything longer than four months because because you know, there's six months and 12 months payment plans out there. And it's amazed me, you know, a couple of people I've spoken to on a 12 months license right payment pro program, I won't even entertain the idea of a, of a, of a four months. Said, no, this is it, right? Is that because it helps with the commitment? This last bit I just gave you was just a fun bit for my own entertainment. Uh, it wasn't necessarily anything to do with, with the sales process as we do it, but I thought I'd just share a little idea of, of some of the stuff that we do, how we talk with people. So I'm going to get off right now. Um, unless anyone's got any last questions, any burning questions about the sales partnership, the, uh, the thing that we go through with, for you. OK. So we're really glad to do the heavy lifting for you. Uh, if you can supply us the, uh, the good quality leads, uh, we, yes? Sorry. Uh, hold on. Yes. With that uh, same with that same style of asking, saying I don't have I don't have the money, could that be also used? Because because in sales, I found like the two objections: I don't have money or I don't have time. Those are usually the two. Yeah. And when they say they don't have time, could that same um, rebuttal yep. be used? Yeah. But in because I'm I'm thinking in my head, how would I use that in a different context to move into time? Same thing. Same thing. No okay. change. Except one thing. Okay. In natural selling, we don't treat those as objections. Think of the word. I'm sorry about this. Mm -hmm. He asked the question. I can't just leave that there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Think of the word objections. Has it got a negative or has it got a positive connotation to it? Negative. A negative connotation. Okay, in, in natural selling, we don't get objections. We'll get people asking questions. Sometimes there might be a bit of resistance, but it's not objections. And, there's, and we certainly don't overcome objections. We don't do anything about overcoming objections. Anything that comes up, such as time, money, are legitimate concerns. And they have to be addressed, and they become part of the dialogue. Okay, so we need to get behind them. What does no time mean? How is it affecting them? How do we get to a point where they re help them realize that time is just something that they've chosen? Time is, is an issue that they've chosen. And that if time is an issue, then obviously something is more important in their lives. And you can talk about it. I mean, I do. And I said, well, what, what, what do you mean by time? Tell me more about what you're doing. And they'll tell me the, the stages of what's going through a day. And I say, so obviously, this then is more important than what you're trying to do here. I'll actually bring that up. Say, this, so obviously, this is more important. And they'll, they'll protest and say, no, no, no. And I say, well, excuse me. It's obviously that it is because you're putting all your time in that and not over here in what you say that you want to do. And I, I'd be quite kind of strong about that. And it's OK, because I build that rapport and that I can be. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's where it's coming from. Put as much responsibility on them as that you can. They'll own it. And here's another thing. Once they've owned it and made that commitment, the likelihood of them dropping off and then they're being clawed back on commissions, which you get paid and so on, is going to drop off completely. I see very, very little clawback coming over the next year because of this. So anyway, I couldn't resist the temptation of the objections bit. So thank you. Anyway, thanks. It's been great fun. It's been a great audience. Many thanks.